Now in this video we're going to take a look at a very impressive and downright fascinating port of Donkey Kong Country for the NES. Now in 1997, when the NES wasn't even very popular anymore, we are in the PS1 era at this point, bootleg developers still created NES games for NES and Famicom compatible devices for the Famiclones. And these games were still being sold in the developing world, they were still being sold here in Macedonia, even though we already had everything else and we were up to date on everything, they were still being sold here and many kids actually bought them and played them. Nineteen ninety seven would see an incredible port of Donkey Kong to the NES, thanks to Hammersoft. What they did with this game is unspeakably amazing. For starters, you're gonna see the visuals are out of this world for an NES game. They not only ported the SNES visuals, but what they did is they really adapted the visuals to the 8-bit style of the of the NES. And for example, this game looks way better than the Game Boy and the Game Boy Color versions of, of Donkey Kong Country. One distinctive, uh, for me at least, I find it impressive, is distinctive feature is how they're using dark black shadows for the characters and many background objects, giving the game a very comic book, like, visual style, which is actually a very smart move to do for uh, translating the Donkey Kong Country visuals to an 8-bit device. Instead of trying to make them look 3D, they made them look like they were actually hand-drawn and in a very interesting comic book style. Hammersoft, as we know, are often guilty of making good-looking games, however, their games often suffer from bad physics, their games have bad controls, bad gameplay optimization, but surprisingly enough, that's actually not even the case here. Sure, there are some issues with the game, however, for the most part, the controls, the physics, they're amazing for an NES game, especially an NES game of this type. Now, that's not to say everything is perfect, but it's as perfect as it's gonna get. Now, Donkey Kong Country 4, as it's known, is a rather short game, and that's okay, but it still sports quite a few different levels. It's basically a very well designed, very well put together little game that I think any kid would have enjoyed back then. And what's even more impressive is, I think that Hammersoft were very, very well aware of the uh, of the issues that some players might have in getting used to the controls and stuff, even though they're not they're not bad at all. So they were very generous with the amount of lives they give you. We all know that Donkey Kong Country has one of the best soundtracks in gaming history bar none. And surprisingly enough, Hammersoft managed to translate the incredible soundtrack almost perfectly to the NES. I'm, I'm just beyond impressed at how good this game sounds on an NES. I'm playing it on, a, on real hardware, on a Japanese Famicom, and the game sounds amazing. Like, I don't think it uses any special chips. I don't know, I, I don't understand that stuff. And it just sounds incredible. If you're a Donkey Kong Country fan, you should definitely play this. If you just like platformers, you should definitely play this. There's no other way around it. This is a game that you owe it to yourself to check out, to give it a chance and to have some fun with it. Even if you don't like the controls at first, try getting used to them, it's worth it. Because yeah, the game is flawed at times, but it's just such an incredible experience to have on an NES device, it's just amazing. 